Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This is the next installment in a video series about CentOS and uh, how to install it and use it as your uh, VPS on your personal computer. VPS standing for Virtual Private Server. And um, we have installed our version of uh, CentOS 7.5 on a virtual, um, virtual box environment. And, and created it as a virtual machine. So after the installation, the successful installation of CentOS 7, we want to go ahead and um, and decide what to do after the installation. So let's go ahead and start. So after the successful installation of CentOS, we want to go over a few things so that we can go ahead and make sure that it's properly maintained and working. So. Uh, let's go ahead and just prove that uh, what version we have here and that's just using the command cat space etc space red hat dash r e l e and then hit the tab button to finish the command and then that's the command we want to use and you just press enter and then as you can see CentOS release 7.5 has been installed now the next thing we want to do is we want to go over the package manager that we need to use to install different packages uh, such as updates and software uh, patches and uh, yeah software updates security updates and software packages and we want to use that using the package known as or the software package known as yum and to give you an idea of what yum stands for you want to use the man command and that's just short for manual pages and then space yum that's going to give us some information about the yum package manager so you just press enter from here and it's going to give you information about the yum package manager and as you can see yum is an acronym for yellow dog updater modified and it's as we said, it's a package manager that you can use for installing software onto your CentOS system. And now to get out of Yum, or to get out of the man pages, you just, on your keyboard, you press Q for quit. And now what we're going to do is clear the screen. You type in clear, press enter, and the screen is cleared. Okay, now to go over a few commands, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, some um, some packages. Okay, one of the packages that we want to look at is going to be and Yum is a uh, package manager. It's a software package that you have to have root rights to use. Root being admin, overall power over the whole system. So we're going to type in sudo yum space n f o space and then in map that's a that's a good uh, piece of software that everyone should have on their system whether it's a server or whether it's a regular desktop but in either case we just go and press enter okay and then as we can see down here at the bottom it gives us the information about in map and what you can use it for and what all the features are okay and so we're gonna go ahead and use yum the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and click the clear screen, and we're going to go ahead and do a, uh, an update, and we're going to do an update and an upgrade of the system, and we do that with the command sudo yum space, and then you can do an update space minus y, excuse me, minus y, space, and then double ampersand, and then space, and then sudo yum space upgrade space minus y once you press enter it's going to go ahead and update the system now it's not going to update my system's already updated so it's going to be a lot quicker and it's going to say no no need to update anything else press enter and as you say no packages marked for update loaded plugins yada 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 as I said I already did an update before the start of this video so it's going to show that okay all right so I got a little to-do list of things we need to do after the installation of CentOS so 
we already did an update of the system all right and like I said we use the minus Y the minus Y switch tells the uh, yum package that we don't want to answer any questions we just want everything automatically updated now the next thing let's go ahead and do is we're going to uh, in look for a list of packages that are already installed it on the system okay so we just go back to our CentOS and the next thing we're going to do is type in sudo space yum space uh, list space installed space and then we're going to use the pipe space and then we're going to use the less command okay now the pipe that's just a um, uh, that's a command that you can use when you want to combine more than one command okay and you can find that on your keyboard if you look all the way over to your right hand side um, it's right next to well on mine I have a laptop I have a HP uh, Elite Light laptop okay and it's gonna it's gonna look like a um, an up and down line okay and it's gonna be on the same button as the backslash all right and so you just use that you press enter and here's a list of your uh, packages that are already installed on your system now this is for a CentOS 7 minimum installation so it's not going to be a whole lot of packages in here but it's enough to do whatever it is you want to do and you can always add more packages later now <coughs> from this what you can do if uh, it loads it one page at a time if you want to go to the next page on your keyboard you press the space button and it goes to the next page now if you want to go to the previous page you hit the uh, B button on your keyboard and it go back to the previous page when you get done looking at your packages and seeing what it is you got you want to get out of this environment you press Q on your keyboard and it'll get you out okay so we're done with that we're going to clear the screen and press enter all right so let's go over the next thing that we want to do looks like what we want to do next is uh, install network tools okay and the reason why we want to install network tools is because this is CentOS 7 right so let's go ahead and look at the version of CentOS we have Dash R E L space that's the command to look at the version of uh, CentOS that we have. You press enter. And it tells you right there we have CentOS 7.5. Now with this version of CentOS as of 2018, um, it does not have some of the older commands that a lot of uh, legacy Linux uh, uh, operating systems used to have. In other words, it doesn't have the ifconfig. Okay. It doesn't have that command. It's going to say command is not recognized okay no such file or directory it doesn't have uh, let's see it doesn't have net stat okay command not found and it doesn't have like trace route command not found these are what is known as legacy uh, tools network tools in other words they're tools that are no longer used okay what you can use if you want to start using uh, newer commands is you would use the IP command and to look at your interface it would be IP space ADDR space show and then from here it's going to show you a list of interfaces that are connected to your computer and the inter interface information except uh, as in the IP address the MAC address and all that kind of stuff so if we go ahead and just press enter as you can see it shows two interfaces I have uh, number one which is the loopback interface okay and it shows the IP address the IP, this is IP version 4 IP address this is IP version 6 IP address okay and then if you go ahead and look at the second interface that's the interface name all right there's the IP address and all the information there okay so we just click 
uh, or we type in the command clear, press enter, and that clears the screen. Now, if you want to start using the legacy uh, tools, you can. We'll go ahead and download that. Uh, and the command to do that is just going to be sudo space, oh, oops, sudo space. And then you want to type in yum space. Then you want to type in install space. And then you want to type in the package name, which in this case is going to be NET space tools. Okay, space. And then press enter. Okay, and then it's going to ask you. Here's the package information. Do you want to continue? You press Y for yes and press enter. And as you can see, it went ahead and did its thing. And at the bottom, it went ahead and create uh, installed the package. Now, if for some reason you want to delete any package, you would go back, hit the up arrow, or at least that's what I do. You can go ahead and do it uh, manually if you want. And you would install you would do a sudo yum r-e-m-o-v-e -E -E, and this would take the package out of your system okay but we're not going to do that i was just giving you that command and so from here if you type in i have config it's going to show your interface now okay and if you typed in next that okay that's going to show your information all right not sure you type in trace route, but I think you got to put in something. Okay, it looks like you got to install trace route uh, separately then. All right, so that's okay. So, what you can do with ifconfig minus a, that's going to show you all your interfaces. Okay, and then for netstat, if you want to look at the ports, you can go ahead and type in netstat minus L, L for listening, or I'm sorry, T for TCP IP, L for listening on the ports, and then N for the port names, or the port numbers, excuse me. You press enter. Okay. And as you can see, these are all the ports that are open and that are being listened to right now. Port 25 is for, um, let's see, I believe that's for inbound email. And then port 22, that's for SSH, right? And so we go ahead and uh, that's how you listen in on your ports. All right. So let's just go ahead and press clear. Go ahead and press or type in clear and that clears the screen. All right. So we went ahead and we looked at the package list. We went ahead and we installed net tools. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to look at the firewall. Make sure that the firewall is is uh, enabled on our system. So we do that with um, with a, a special command or a, a, a special type of command. And this is uh, a list of commands that are used with the system D package system D is an initialization and runtime uh, uh, software package it replaced in that D okay so you'll find system D on your newer um, Linux systems so let's go ahead and check the services for our firewall firewall D is the package that comes with system D and it's basically a front end for the IP tables on your system. Okay, so let's just go ahead and check. So the first thing we want to do, this is also a command that you want to use with uh, root rights. So sudo space, then you want to do firewall D. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you want to do you want to do a system, and then you want to do a s s y s T E M C T L space and then status space and then you want to do firewall D. Okay, once you do that, you press enter and it's going to tell you the status of that firewall. So as you can see, if you come down here, it's going to show active and it's just actively running. And if you look up right above that where it says loaded, it's going to show loaded and it's going to show enabled. Enabled means that it's going to go ahead and every time the computer reboots, it's going to um, 
it's going to load up this service and the, your firewall will be running. And that's great. Okay. So that's good. And the next thing we want to do, let's go ahead and clear the screen. The next thing we want to do is look at our firewall settings. Okay. We already seen that it's basically active. There's another command that you can use to check and see if everything's enabled. And so that command is just going to be using sudo. And this one you're going to need root rights to. Well, uh, firewall space cmd space. And then you want to do a tac tac. And then you want to do a state. This is going to tell us also if the firewall is enabled. You press enter. And it shows the firewall is running. And that's good. Now the next thing we want to do for the firewall is we want to see um, uh, with firewall D, as we said, it's a front end for the IP tables. And the way you run, um, you, the way you manipulate your firewall with firewall D is you want to use what are known as zones. Zones are used for creating firewall rules for, um, for bringing stuff up, for bringing up services, for attaching stuff that are that uh, that you want to attach to your interface your NIC card your network interface card okay so let's go ahead and look and see what zones we have so you want to use the command sudo space firewall minus cmd oh cmd space tac tac and then you want to look at um, what um, zones you have so you want to type in GT space get oh, zones and press enter. These are all the zones that we have installed by default. Now you can't create zones, your own personal zones. We're not going to do that today. That's not a part. That's that's beyond the level of this uh, uh, video. But what we will do is we will go ahead and look at what zones are already attached to our interface and that's very easy we're going to hit the up arrow okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to type in the command let's see it's going to be dash and then active zones so with this command we're going to get a list of all the active zones that we have configured on this computer and then press enter okay so as you can see we already have an active zone um, the zone is dropped now let me go ahead and show you what I did this is what I uh, configured earlier and then after I show you what I did then I'm gonna show you why I did it okay so what we did was we went ahead and we configured our zone with uh, with our um, with our interface and we configured it to drop now you have several zones, okay? You have public zone, you have private zone. We already went over the different zones that we had, right? Okay, get zones. So you got blocked zones, DMZ zones, drop, external home. By default, it sets it to public zone, right? Well, I didn't want public zone because that would have made everything open. It would have made everything to where you can just look at the IP address. You could ping the IP address. I didn't want my IP address to be pingable. And I didn't want to use uh, DMZ or block so that it would reject the IP addresses. So let me set it back to the default uh, zone, which was public. And I'll show you what happens here. So we want to type in this command so that we can set our zone. Instead of setting it to drop, we're going to set it to public. So here's what I did for that. And yes, I don't remember these things off the top of my head, so I'm going to go from my notes, and we're going to type in sudo firewall space or dash cmd space dump dump tac tac and then zone and then equal and then public space and then from there let's see what we got here public space tac tac change and then let's see again we got interface
and then equal, and then I think my interface, geez, I forget what my interface was. Okay, well, that's all right. Let's go ahead and go back here and we'll look at our interface. And if you remember, for looking at our interfaces with the new command, it was just IP space. And then you, instead of hitting the whole command, I, uh, address you can just do an IP space uh, IP space a space s and that's short for show and then press enter right okay so our interface was ENP 0 s3 I don't know why they have that named like that but that's what they did so what we'll do is we'll do a sudo space firewall space CMD space and then let's see let's go back over it again oh okay zone change okay so we want to do tac tac zone and then i believe it was in uh okay equal drop but instead of drop what we're gonna do hold on equal public and tack and then tack tack change interface so this tack tack change tack interface let me make sure I got my command right okay equal interface name and then our interface name was let's see what is it ENP 0 s3 and then you press enter success okay so then you do a sudo our wall space cmd space get tech tech get space zones oh no I'm sorry active zones press enter and as you can see, it shows that we have public as our as our zone. Now, let me show you what happens. All right, we go to my host machine, and if we pipe, if we type in the IP address for our interface, which was okay, the interface for ENP ENP zero S three was. Let's go ahead and do a ping space. Oh, no. Ping and then 192.168.1.7. Right? It's going to ping it. All right? Now, most of you say, well, that's great. What's the problem? The problem is, is that one of the methods that hackers use is they do a ping of your IP address. Okay? And then from there, they can tell what ports are open, what ports are closed. So, if they can't ping it, in other words, if you have your um, your interface set to not respond to uh, to pings, then it's it's it it doesn't really exist. So when they run whatever port scanners they have, they can't see which IP address is. Thereby, they can't see what ports are open. So for this, we're just going to go ahead and do a, a Control C to stop the ping. All right. And now we're going to come back over here. We're going to do a clear and then an enter. And then we're going to go ahead and set this zone to drop. And what that means is, is it, it's going to drop the pings. It's not going to respond to it. The pings are otherwise known as ICMP, uh, Internet Control Message Protocol. It's the ping command. It allows your interface when it's pinged or when there is an IP address that's attached to it, It'll go ahead and respond to the pings. So if we go ahead and hit the up arrow, okay, then we have we have this command, which has we have which has this interface set to public. So we're going to change it from public to drop, and then we're going to press enter. All right, and it's successful. Now let's go back and see what happens when it pings. Right. Okay, let's go ahead and do a clear screen here. Hit the up arrow. That was our last command. Watch what happens. 
you're going to see that it's not going to ping. It's not going to respond to pings. It's not going to be successful. Okay. As you can see, it's not, it's not pinging it. Now, if we do a control C on the keyboard, it's going to stop the ping attempts. All right. All right. And as you can see, I have 25 packets, right? And those packets were sent, they were transmitted, but none of them were received. So I got 100% packet loss. Loss. That means that my packet, that my um, IP address and the interfaces connected to that IP address was not responding to pings. Okay. So we have went, we have went a um, a little further than I wanted to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here and then I'll go ahead and start another one and we'll continue the things that we need to do after we have installed our CentOS uh, operating system server. So thank you very much. I appreciate you guys looking at this video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, any links, any relevant information, I'm going to go ahead and include into the uh, the description of this video. Thank you very much and you have a good day.